Next question, Alexander G. Ramos. Dutch, I want to thank you for your time and words of wisdom. As someone who used to watch wrestling in the 80s as a child, these wrestling shoot interviews are more exciting than the current product. I agree. Uh, I wanted to ask of you, if you had ever seen any backstage or out-of-the-ring skirmishes with Rick Rude? No, but I've, I've, heard, I've heard of them. They said it was, he, was, he was a one-punch artist. He had a hell of a punch. And when he would straighten one out on you, that's it. Now, he came out of Minnesota with the same place the Road Warriors came from. Uh, Nikita Koloff came out of Minnesota. Uh, and there was a few more Minnesota guys. Uh, Hennig. Henny, and they all say, of all of them, who's the toughest? They all would say Rick Rude. Because nobody would mess with Rick Rude. And, you know, sometimes when you get a reputation like that, you know, nobody wanted to tangle with Rude. Rude, but Rude was a nice guy. You know, you go out there and he'd, he'd work his ass off. And But I, I imagine that if you got in a tussle with him and he straightened one out on you, yeah. He wasn't – they call this tendon strength because he was kind of lean and no fat on him. When he straightened one out, that's it. And I never wanted to be on the other end of the one that he straightened out because you'd be laying on a – you'd be laying on the floor knocked out. But he was a good guy. Came into Memphis when he was really, really green. I think he came straight from Minnesota, had a girl with him, and and wanted to learn. Now, he didn't know a lot, but he he got to ring every day. And that was his training, basically. And he watched the matches. And so anytime you get a chance to learn and you're green, watch the other matches, listen to your opponent, because most of the time they're going to put you with an experienced guy anyway to lead you through it. So, and I work with Rick Rude 50 times and never had a problem with him. Oh, so. He beat me 48 times <laughs> we trying to get him over, but, but nice guy and actually easy to work with. I was going to say, we were talking last week about bodybuilders, just bam, 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 laying it in. I mean, he was bodybuilder-esque in the set. I know he was like slimmer, but he had a great body on him. Was he sort of very, very clubbery as well? Or did he not have that? With no. Him? No, he would, he would, you, you could teach him. See that big bodybuilder I was talking about last week. No, you couldn't teach him nothing. Cause I think a lot of that muscle was in his brain. See, there's a thing about wrestling. I think people don't understand. It is the premise behind it. It's supposed to look good without hurting you. And when you go to the ring, you're almost like a doctor. You know, when a doctor takes his Hippocratic oath, it is to do no harm. Well, a lot of wrestlers need to take that prologue up and saying up to not to hurt anybody. Because, you know, when you get somebody and you can tell, I could tell when I locked up with somebody if they're the shits or not. And the bodybuilders would just lock up so stiff. I mean, I had a lock up, but it wasn't stiff. It was snug. Like I could take the guy. And when I'm snug, I want him to be snug because you need to have, that's the way I'd liked it. But if you're not, but that's not going to hurt you. But when those bodybuilders lock up, I mean, my God, they, you know, and you can tell they're straining every muscle all the way down to their knees. They're, they're actually posing, and that's why they blow up because they're posing in the, you know, you got to hold it and watch your breathing because you don't want your gut, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, telegraphing that you're blowed up. But but he was tough, and but the, the big bodybuilders never got it. Even the road warriors for years and years, they just beat the crap out of guys. All those little job boys go out there, and I'd say, Damn. And and they would come in and thank him, but after the guy was laying there, he's, he's half knocked out. He probably don't even remember it. But I've seen Animal and, you know, Hawk just, I mean, annihilate him. And I'd sit back like this going, oh, God, oh, 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 stop, quit, give up. 
surrender, leave. <laughs> oh, with Rick, you met oh, or the question asks, asker uh, asked this about his uh, vaunted ability to knock people out with one punch. Did he have this reputation in Memphis, or did he sort of build on that no. reputation in Memphis, or did he have fights with other wrestlers, or just other no. people telling you? Not that I know of. His Memphis was built in Minneapolis. See, all that little crew ran around together in high school. And then later on, they all, it, it was like a little club they had. And they probably see, saw Rick straighten some guys out. Because I've never heard of Rick Rude losing a fight. I remember, I remember one time he got on the <laughs> – he stood on the top rope in Memphis. He was getting ready to jump off. <laughs> I had to laugh and he lost his balance. I went, Oh God. And he, he didn't fall off. He actually put his feet down and he jumped down to the floor and then made it look like he intended to do that. But he was up there and he was going like this. Whoa. And I was going to stay there. And I'm just standing at the back watching the match. And I saw him do, that. <laughs> but he covered it up. It's like, you know, he, he went immediately to the guy and grabbed him and, and went right through it. Uh, this might be a simple no answer, but do you remember the issues between Ric Flair and Rick Rude? Because I don't believe they were friends in WCW at that time. Well, probably Rude didn't like him. Because I'll tell you what happened. If, if they had trouble between them, that was called Ric Flair high-hatted him. You know what I mean, high-hatted him? like pull rank on him or something, or who are you, or, you know, Flair's probably come closer to getting more ass whippings, but didn't because of his status in the wrestling profession. You can't, you just can't beat up the champion and expect him to help you out later on because he had a lot of money tied up in him. But if they had, if they had heat, it was because of that. What did you hear of a specific incident? Absolutely nothing. I just know there was something there. But we won't dwell on that because I don't think either of us know. So we'll move on to the next question. 